It's good to see you again. Um, we've just completed seven and a half weeks of uh, training, and I think we're in really good shape, and physically we're, we look good. Um, I think Ben Souders and his satch and that staff have done an outstanding job of getting these kids ready for spring ball. We're excited about spring ball. We have 39 new players on the team. I think it's kind of the way of college football. Um, but the guys that have come in new uh, for us have really gelled and meshed. The team has accepted them, and they've done a nice job in the workouts and things of that nature. So uh, we're excited. We're Obviously, we've moved to the mornings um, uh, this spring. Uh, it's hard to get used to, you know, uh, because you're always – Usually you have the day to prepare for what you're going to do, and then you have to do it at night knowing that tomorrow morning is the next deal. So we're going to try it, obviously, uh, throughout the spring, try spring ball and things of that nature early, see how we like it, and depend on how we like it, what we'll do in the fall. Um, we will have uh, three Saturdays um, that will be open to you guys and to the public, um, including the scrimmage and uh, all scrimmages and uh, other than that it'll be our practice on Tuesday and Thursday will start around 8 o'clock 8 10 and then I think the first scrimmage will be at 9 the second one at 10 and then the spring game is will be at noon uh, but I like where we're at I think every coach in America will tell you that they like where they're at right now uh, I do I'm excited to see we've got a lot of battles a lot of challenges that we have uh, a lot of uh, depth chart battles and things of that nature um, coming into spring that's going to be exciting to figure out. Um, but other than that, I'm excited about the new coaches that we added with, you know, three on offense with, um, of course, uh, Coach Petrino and, and uh, uh, Eric Mateus and, and uh, of course, Ronnie Fouch. So those guys have done a good job. The players have – have taken to those guys too, and it always works both ways. So excited about where we are, and we'll see what happens with that. You, I'll answer any questions you might have. Uh, as you mentioned, a lot of quarter, uh, a lot of battles, but quarterback is obviously yeah. one that draws a lot of attention. You mentioned in a recent interview that you'd like to have it, I think, wrapped up in the spring. Yeah, yeah. I think we can. I think you know, uh, with some of the things that we're doing. Seven on seven, you know, we'll be able to – it's going to be a lengthier period, more reps and things of that nature. We need to. We have to to see who can throw and, and who can catch for that matter. Um, and then we need help and, you know, we need work in the secondary because we did bring in through three new guys in the secondary too. So we made a uh, – that period used to been 12 minutes. We went to 20 uh, trying to make sure everybody gets the right amount of reps so we can get the evaluations on both the quarterback, the receivers, and – the safeties and the corners, uh, so we have added that added that part of it. But the quarterback battle, um, you know, there's uh, basically probably five guys in there vying for that spot. You know, obviously with Taylor and Malachi and Chris and and uh, I like Ledbetter. I mean, him coming over from baseball, he's 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 done a nice job of showing his leadership ability and they think and then I think we've got something special in KJ Jackson uh, for our future and and so we need to figure out all that kind of stuff and and uh, excited to get going with that battle. Uh, personnel stuff um, you've got a few guys that were injured late DeBinion and uh, has is obviously was out all season Ty Washington um, Chambly I believe left the team right um, just any updates on on those guys and and anything you can comment on Chambly also? Yeah, I think uh, uh, Mari Wiggins uh, had um, cartilage trimmed, so I don't know that he'll be able to go Thursday, Friday. He may be back on Sunday, you know. But that one there, um, Tyrus Washington will be able to catch some passes after spring break. You know, he'll probably miss totally the first five days. Uh, but then we just can't. We just got to make sure he doesn't go on the ground with that shoulder. Uh, but he's 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 coming along. He's ahead of ahead of schedule with that shoulder. We need to be uh, really smart with him this spring. Uh, Andrew Chambly uh, just lost a love for the game um, and decided to uh, start his professional. You know, uh, start his college as a regular student career. 
And uh, uh, I can't think of anybody. Oh, uh, uh, Zuri Madison had a scooter accident, and he tore his ACL. And uh, that was maybe two or three days ago, maybe four days, maybe last week. Just hit a curve and put his leg out straight, and then, you know, the ACL couldn't handle that pressure. And it's just, it's a shame because he's really a talented guy, and we'll use it. You know, he'll get stronger and bigger and those things, and he'll be back. And, you know, the, as you know, an ACL injury takes a while, so he probably won't be back till either the end of this season, maybe uh, – Get prepared, maybe in a bowl situation, or or uh, come back next spring. Yeah, R Dub's good. I think those guys there, Trey. To be honest with you, I think those are the only ones that uh, probably won't be ready day one. Those guys we just talked about, and I may have missed guys because they were over in the slot that they're not going to practice. But I think Ty was was one of those guys. And I, you remember anybody else? I can't remember anybody else to be honest. If I didn't remember, it wasn't because I was trying to hold it from you. I just I just forgot about him. Luke is back. Has say again. Luke has. Yeah, he's back, ready to go, and really looking good in in uh, in all the running and things of that nature, lifting. And no, no uh, nothing holding him back. A lot of new faces on, on the offensive line, but also some returning guys like Kudis and Crawford. Just what are your impressions of them entering spring? Yeah, you know we're we're moving Kudis inside. Uh, I think with our with our um, guys that we got out of the portal, I think it allowed us to do that. And we're going to keep Ty Keast out there at tackle. Um, but I, the guy that I've been really impressed with is Marion Harris. Uh, some of the things that he's been able to do. I think, you know, he's been here. Uh, waiting your turn is not really a very good, but he's been patient with his opportunities. And, and uh, I think he's ready to, to move on up. And, and uh, he certainly is working like that. And uh, so those guys back with Wiggins, and he'll be back. It'll be a couple days, but he's about ready. It'll be three weeks uh, Thursday, I believe, Th three weeks Friday since he had his trim. And so I think he'll be back uh, sooner than later. And uh, we, we did lose a lot of offensive linemen with uh, medical red shirts and, and uh, obviously with uh, Andrew's situation. But um, – I think the three that we replaced, uh, they're going to help us. I like the two tackles, and of course Nichols is. You know, I offered Nichols at Georgia when he was a sophomore, and back then you had to be special, special, or you weren't going to get offered. You know, and and uh, that he was a no-brainer at that point. Uh, I think moving him to center uh, will be a really good move for him and for our football team. And then linebacker room, pretty inexperienced. But I mean, yeah. do you feel good about the talent you have in there? I do. I'm I'm really excited about those guys. You know, with Spence, I, I like Spence and and Sanford, and uh, uh, Carson Dean is a guy that can run and is big, and and uh, and then Xavier Sorry has has been a good addition to the room. Those guys. You know, I told T. Will, we'll wait and see after spring ball what we're going to do in the in the portal. I like Juju Pope. We moved Juju there. He's he's a little bit undersized right now. He's about 205. But he has that linebacker mentality. And, uh, and of course, you have Henley and, and guys on down the road. Two of our guys we don't have yet. You know, what's amazing, guys, is, is you have a team. And here's how times have changed. You have – Three guys. Now, let's take away portal if something happens in April or whatever. I'm talking about today. You have three guys that aren't here, and the rest of the entire team that's going to play in 24 is already here. Hadn't that changed, you know, from high school, early graduations? And two of those, uh, Wyatt Simmons and Brad Shaw, are linebackers, you know, that are not here yet. Uh, and, of course, uh, uh, Johnson – or uh, Cross is, is – uh, is not here yet. Those are the three. But uh, other than that, they're all here. And, and I, I think we're really going to see – they all can run. They're all big enough. They're all physical. They just haven't had the opportunity to get out there yet. And, and so we'll find out what we have. I, I think we're going to find that we're pretty good there. Um, young doesn't always mean you can't play. 
It just means you need experience. And uh, so part of the thinking with opening up the uh, practices is because we are going to have some young kids and the quarterbacks, especially besides Taylor, that haven't played in front of people. And hopefully it'll it'll kill two birds with one stone. We invite the you know the state in to watch the kids play, and then they'll play it in front of people, and it might help them. And we'll be able to find out a little bit more about them. That part of that went with the linebacker group as well. Hey, what's the logic behind going at eight? There's got to be like benefits that you you see to do this. You you worried about your alarm clock, dude? I'm I'm gonna be up. I'm gonna be ready. Um. Well, it all, to be perfectly honest with you, it all went around what time we could get the kids out to get to class. And, you know, we could only push classes back X amount of, you know, 11.30, 11.50. And so part of that was to make sure that they were able to eat in the morning, meet, and then have enough time to shower, eat, and get to class. So that, that was the thinking behind it. Yeah, going back to the opening up practices to the fans and everything, is that going to be kind of a you – know, do you anticipate that being a, the norm now, or is it just because you do have some inexperience on this team and want to get them in front of the fans and everything? Well, it became it, – the, the, it, it came about because of the latter part of that question. Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I really don't know. Um, uh, whatever it is that makes us play better. And, uh, you know, it's just like – are we, you know, we're so worried about people knowing this and that and the other about us. And I'm talking about our opponents, not not our people of the state. But if our state knows it, our opponents know it, you know. So I think we've been worried for so many years about all that. And I have too. Um, but the bottom line is, is we've got to get ready to pay, play Pine Bluff. And that starts, that started in January. And by the time we play Oklahoma State, they're going to know a lot about our team anyway because we just played a game. So I just became – it was more about us and, and do we believe that we can grow the um, love back for the Arkansas or, if, or grow the love for the Razorbacks by opening it up and us benefiting from it as well. I don't know what the answer would be in the fall, but I'm assuming that it will be much more lenient than – access to the players and coaches and things of that than what it has been in the past. And I think about this time last year, you told us about how you're planning to maybe go for it more on fourth down and everything. <laughs> I, I read an article uh, recently that you said you're going to maybe go back to go following your gut. Uh, what made you maybe go so far into the analytics last year, and then was it just an easy well, choice for you to switch back work. to going with your gut? Um, or? Well, I was over. You know, when you're batting over, they – you know, in the major leagues, you go down a level, you know, at least I have an opportunity to fix it. And so, um, you know, you're always going to have disagreements, you know, and even in your own staff, whether you're going for it or whether you don't. Um, I found that the faster you make the decision, the more you're going to stay with the decision, you know what I mean? Because heaven forbid you make a decision and they call time out and you go, oh, well, are we really doing the right thing, you know, and try to talk yourself out of it. So um, we will have the analytics available, but just because it says go, you know, that was kind of my – I went more off of analytics last year than I did off of myself and very, very – it was very uncomfortable for me. And then when we did it, it didn't work. And so we're going to – hopefully find a happy medium that when we make a decision, it works, you know. So what did you see from Jacoby from a physical standpoint, from a leadership standpoint um, since he's been here? He's got a strong arm. I think that's the, the thing. And he's a guy you can count on work ethic wise and things of like that. I certainly wish he was, uh, you know, will continue to get more vocal and that those leaderships by, uh, skills by verbally in, uh, being more vocal. Um, but he's got a strong arm, and, and he'll be in a – it'll be a battle there with those guys. Yeah. And Taylor Green, same question. What? Taylor Green's um, outgoing. Uh, he's got a personality. Um, says what he's thinking, but – 
not too much, if you know what I mean. He's not a um, – got a lot of respect from him coming in here and his – from the team, obviously from the coaches, but his work ethic and things of that nature. Uh, I think he might have a little advantage on all the guys because he ran a team, you know, and, and uh, so he, it may come a little bit more natural right now for him than – everybody else at this point the decision for the early practices though you, you surely though had felt like there'd be a benefit to you and the staff by doing it because i can't remember early practices here so what, what is it from your standpoint that this will be a benefit what, to what us went in, what into when it went into the thinking well we felt like we could get and to the beginning was we felt like we could get better better tutoring and we felt like we could have less guys uh, with you know, in the in the evening, a lot of times you'll have ten, twelve guys leave the last thirty minutes of practice. We we'll just thought our scheduling so we could have the entire team would be better. Along with, we felt like we could get uh, better during the day tutoring. And that's where it started from. Then I started talking about from different coaches on our staff that had been in the early morning. They all liked it. You know, uh, uh, you get up and you go play ball. The kids liked it. I, I did it one time when I was at Tennessee for one year in 12. That's the only year I was there. But in 12 we did it. I liked it. I'm still having time of a hard time wrapping my mind around fall. Uh, I feel like Mondays are so valuable to us that you're going to need Sunday, you know, to wrap up the previous game, and then you're going to need at least five hours that night to work, and then you're going to need the other five, six to get ready and continue the work towards a Monday practice. I don't know that we'll do it in the fall. I just I, I haven't been able to wrap my mind around losing a Monday practice and I don't want to take I don't want to take Monday off and Sunday on I just I don't think you you can prepare your kids Sunday for a practice when you get home at you know two or three o'clock in the morning so uh wh will I do it again I don't know um I'm, I'm so damn old that I'm used to what I like and I think we'll have a big discussion at the end of it. I don't really know if, for sure if we're going to like it or not, Tom. I have liked, liked the off season, you know, the seven and a half weeks, but we haven't had spring ball with it yet. So maybe that would be a good question after spring ball. Sam, uh, we spoke to you after uh, Landon announced, but I don't think we got your thoughts on it. Just like how much of a boost has it been him specifically coming back and what does his presence mean for – just the, the culture of the program, having that kind of experience. Back yeah, he's, in the he's a great kid. And I, I don't know that we were ever concerned, and that's not that way with everybody, but I don't know that we were ever concerned with him leaving and going in the portal. I think it was uh, leaving and going to the NFL. And uh, so, you know, obviously um, we had to work through some hoops and different things, but he always wanted to stay. Um, but it means a lot to the program. Um, and, uh, and the more kids you have like that wanting to come back and then, they, you know, they get into the mode of we have something to prove. Last year was not, you know, indicative of what, what the uh, years before were and things of that nature. And I think the more you get around guys that's that way, it, it'll help your team. But he's, you know, obviously with him being a captain, um, and coming back, I think it was a big, big deal, and and for just who he is. It's only been a couple months, but have you seen any immediate benefits to having Coach Petrino on staff, and you know, just some some of the positives that maybe he's brought to the entire program? Well, I like all three of them. You know, I, I like, and of course, Bobby runs it. You know, he runs the offense, and and uh, uh, but uh, I think I think those three guys have have helped us. Um, Bobby's very organized and, and uh, you know, it's his offense and and uh, uh, he's very comfortable with all the call. You know, he went back because I, I think maybe when it was at A&M, some things, you know, verbiage changed and all that kind of stuff. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I wanted to come singing off your, 
off your, you know, out of your mouth what you do and you just put it in like you want it in and then, you know, I'll figure out the, the verbiage of it. And uh, so I th- he's doing great. Um, and the guys that have come in have really uh, bought into it. I, I think the wideouts are really excited about, about well, the, the entire offense are very excited about Coach Petrino being, being uh, running the show. Coach, on the running back situation, do you feel like you've got four, that, at least four, that could play pretty much any time you need them? I do. You know, I, another thing you're talking about spring ball, we're going. It's going to be our. We're going to tackle to the ground now, and we we will more than two or three times, and uh, so we'll see about the running backs. But obviously, R. Dub and Isaiah, you know, had uh, Jaquindon Jackson is a big physical guy. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys, I, I love Braylon Russell. I think what he's done, he came in, he was big, you know, and he's, but he was big in vertical 33 or something. I mean, very, very athletic guy. Uh, but I, I do, I think, and, you know, I think Damo uh, is now, you know, he's not using the brace, knee brace as much, but we're big at running back. You know, uh, and that's to me. That's what you have to have in this league. Um, but yeah, I think I think I don't think it's going to be a rotating of four and five guys. But we got to find who that ace in the hole is, and and I don't think we know that answer right now. Is Vito, someone that is he just going to kick off, or is he going to be someone to challenge Shipley for the place kick in? He'll be able to challenge. You know, he's got an incredible leg. You know, that's just like Scott was. We were going over kickoff. I said, well, hell, if Vito's a kickoff guy, you can put me out there. That I mean, they ain't going to return it. It's going to go up in the seats, you know. But uh, uh, he's got to earn that. I like Matthew. I like Shipley a lot. You know, obviously transferred in from Hawaii. Uh, we haven't had a chance to watch him kick other than on his film. Uh, but uh, I think that will be a really good battle to answer your question. Okay, you mentioned linebacker, obviously, for the portal possibility coming up. Yeah. Well, that's that's obvious. But is defensive tackle, you know, interior yeah. defensive line, is that another spot? Yes, um, I think I think we're 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 four that I like a lot, and and there can be more. But I, you know, four of them have have played a lot of ball in there for us. Uh, Guffard, not quite as much, but you know, he was on our goal line package, things of that nature last year, but. Um, yeah, I, sheer number wise, we're going to have to have some more guys there. Same thing at linebacker, you know, uh, uh, for sure. And I'd like to get another center if I could offensively and and uh, see where we're at after spring ball. You've been open in the past about wanting some changes to the recruiting calendar. How do you feel about the proposal of adding the June period and then maybe moving the December one? Well. I don't think it's going to hit everybody's going to like everything about, you know, if you're in the playoffs, you may like this, you may not like that. If, uh, But I, I will say this, I've always thought if a young man, and I think it will help the portal and the NIL, to be perfectly honest with you. I think if a young man comes in in June and he wants to go to the University of Arkansas and he has an opportunity in June to do that, then – you know, guys are being recruited when they're in ninth and eighth and grade, you know. And so it's not like it's going to be their first time on a campus. And so the problem is, you know, we moved it. it used to be February, and we moved it to December. Now we're moving it to June, potentially. And how far – the biggest question for me is how is it going to affect the high school uh, are they going to sign and then go, well, I've reached my goal this and I'm not going to play my senior year for the high school. That was the biggest question for me because it's happened in the past. And as you well know, if it happens once and it can go again, 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 it's just like bowl opt outs. Now it happened one time. And then now the half your team's not playing anymore. So that would be the biggest concern that I would have about the early, but I think it will help you in, in it's going to help you in management of your roster. Because, you know, right now, I mean, with April coming and the portal open up again, I mean, one of those portal things got to stop. I mean, to me, it's once, but I, from what I understand, it will it probably never go back to one time. Uh, but it, but I do think it will help you manage your roster. And, and to me, it will take some of the 
bad blood out of out of recruiting uh, late. Coach, when you're going back to your wide receiver room and, and what you like there, developing that room, continuing to build that talent while also, as you have a QB battle, working on that chemistry with these quarterbacks, how are you balancing that this fall? Yeah, that was the thought of seven on seven. So we could see, you know, make sure. Because we do have – we, we got to figure out whether we're going to stay where we're at or go in the portal for some depth at wide receiver as well. You know, we haven't seen Jordan Anthony hardly at all. I saw him over there running a 60. He's really fast, you know. Um, but that was the only portal guy that we brought in. And C.J. Brown was, by the way, doing fantastic. Uh, he's really got a solid, solid future. Um, but the rest of them are all back. You, you look at a Dasman James, you know, who was a state 100-meter champion in North Carolina, 6'2", big physical guy that can run, but he didn't get on the field last year. It's his time. You know, he's got to do that. He's got to get up, in, in my opinion, into the top six. You look at Isaiah Satagna. That's a guy that's very, very talented, but uh, early for whatever reason, we haven't seen that at wide receiver. Uh, we've seen it in special teams and things of that nature. So there's some guys like that. Davion Dozier is another one. Uh, we kind of know about Andrew. And, and I tell you who's looked really good is, uh, is uh, Broden. It looked really good. And so that may have been just uh, six months. He got hurt, you know, last year early and missed some time. But uh, with Tesla and Jaden Wilson and those guys, we got to find who's – Either four, five, six, three, four, five, six. We've got to find that out. I think we have really talented guys on the team. We just got to give them enough reps to figure it out. I was going to ask you about Jordan Anthony too. What's the schedule going to look like with you guys and, and still doing track? If we when we had uh, walkthroughs and we had meetings, he's coming to us. Uh, everything else, including his strength training, speed training, was done through track. So basically, he, he was doing most of his work, his physical work at, with track. Um, as soon as, I think it's this weekend, correct? As he's, or the national championship. As soon as he gets done there, when they get back, then he's a football player. And then after football, he goes back out to track. The only thing is the training part of it, the, the physicality, the weight room and stuff, we're going to keep him with the speed training and that over with track. But other than that, as soon as spring, we're not going to ta tackle him to the ground. I mean, Bucky said he's going to score a lot of points and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. go I was ahead. going to say you probably didn't have very many offensive linemen who were also on the track team, but having a guy like this, what's it like having a balance with two different sports and an athlete? Yeah, Bucky's great, so it's easy, you know. Um, I believe Sotegno will go out for track as soon as spring ball's over with too. He's in a different – he's in a little different shape because uh, he's not, you know, we'll give them to track if as long as they can score points. If they can't score points, and I don't know where he's at with that, we'll find out more in the out, outdoors, um, in the outdoor meets. Um, but um, – with Bucky and Case and those guys, it's been real easy to manage, and and we feel like Jordan will be ready for us, and and uh, obviously Bucky and them feel like that. And the only thing is, I just I'm afraid if we tackle him to the ground, you know, we're gonna we're gonna stay up on him. He'll be considered like a quarterback, you know, at practice. Mike. You've been pretty outspoken about NIL, this latest. Uh, court ruling that blocks the NCAA from enforcing its rule right now there's just no rule to stop schools from getting into a bidding war over high school guys have you thought about how you're going to deal with that well I think it's a great question but to be perfectly honest with you Mike we, we've been dealing with it for a year and a half to be perfectly honest with you um, um with it being open season, I just think it, I think it makes it um, maybe easier, to be honest with you. Uh, that's what it is, you know, especially nowadays you give kids unlimited visits. And if 
they go to this one and this is what they're going to pay and the next one you're not going to get him because you know what he's going to pay so what are you going to do you're going to pay more next one's going to pay more but and kids are smart too you know and and uh so we've been we've been dealing with that for a while do you think though there are still kids out there that Money's not the total bottom line. Just because I might get a few more dollars here, if I want to go to that school, I'll still go to this school I want to go to. I do. I really do. And, you know, we had a – we had a – our whole staff met with a guy. And uh, um, and in that conversation, you know, I was talking about what we're talking about. And one of them was – uh, Bobby had said, you know, maybe with the Arkansas kid going to Arkansas, you know, he wants to play for the Hogs. Now it can't be a discrepancy of a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars. You know what I mean? But from what you're speaking of, I think kids still want to play for the Hogs. Now, not all of them. You know, I mean, we act like every one of them was born and raised in our state. You know, at times, or I do. Not let's say I do. Uh, that's not necessarily true, but maybe the kids that are local, maybe within your five-hour radius or their parents went here, thing, maybe that would be a little bit of difference. And we've seen that. You know, uh, we, had, we got some highly high-recruited guys on our team right now from last year's class that came here, and I, I, I promise you we weren't, we weren't the highest bidder. One more question. Um, ooh. Gone blank. Uh, yeah, all right, I can come back to we you. We have another one. Yeah. Uh, have you ever considered bull riding to raise money? For I'll tell you right now. I didn't know it happened. You know, I'm off of the social media, and, and it's a good and a bad deal. You know, the bad is you you don't know nothing. You know, and uh, so Monday morning, uh, somebody said. Do you know Barry rode a bull? I said, no, he didn't, you know. And, and they said, look at it. And so he about got knocked out. So I texted him, and I said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> he said, it's 150K rides, you know. I said, hey, <laughs> you know. And, of course, I got on Twitter, now I'm supposed to ride a hog or whatever, you know, all that kind of stuff. But um, – it was insane. I said, did you have any training? He said, well, no, they told me how to hold my hand and all that. I said, bro, there's got to be a better way than raising 150 k But that's Barry. I mean, he's tougher than hell. He's always been that way, and, and uh, I'm just glad that he didn't get hurt. I, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I read on the Internet that next month there's going to be a vote on whether or not to allow in-helmet communication. Yeah. And I just wanted to get your reaction if that passes, what it would be like to have Coach Petrino to be able to talk directly to quarterbacks. Yeah. I, th I think – I think that – I'll be honest with you, Mike. They, I think they're going to pass it. I think that's more closer to passing than – well, I'm pretty sure they're going to pass it. And, uh, yeah, I think so. You know, I think the advantage is if you have a calm, cool, collected, you know, guy talking to – well, here's your advantage on offense. You could huddle, and you wouldn't have to – nobody would steal your signals because you got a guy talking directly. Now, if you don't, then you're going to have to – you know, it might not change a whole lot except for that calm, that, hey, look for this, look for that, you know. So it's going to start with 40 seconds. Your communication will start when the 40-second clock starts. And then at 15 or whatever becomes – like if you snap the ball at 20, then it, it goes off. But at 15, it goes off. It's, it's basically what they're doing in the National Football League. You'll get one there and you'll get one on defense too. There'll be a little – I think it's a green light on the helmet of the guy that has it on. Uh, but it's, it's, it's going to pass along with tablets on the sideline and, you know, things of that nature. High school's been doing it for a long time and uh, live video on the sideline. Uh, that'll pass as well, I believe. And I think I think it's a good thing. To be honest with you, uh, we talked about why don't you just put all everybody in one, you know, and then there was something about liability, insurance liability and things of that nature. Uh, but you want to stop anybody stealing signals and things like that, you just put everybody in one and they're hear, hearing one voice and things of that nature. Before we'd ever heard Arkansas Edge, you said you were real excited about – you know, the changes with NIL and stuff. Are you pleased with the transition from one Arkansas uh, to Arkansas Edge? Um, yes. 
Um, Deshaun Stewart, I don't believe he's on the roster. There hasn't been any update on him. Deshaun no longer on the football team. How's that, Mason? Uh, I was curious your impressions just on the recruiting trail of your three new assistants on offense. Yeah, I went out with all of them, you know, and and uh, um, I really like the guys. I mean, Eric, we put him out down in Texas, you know, where he had been working, you know, with Baylor and then Kansas City and, and over in the Jukes in Kansas because he played at Hutch Juco and knows that league and all that from Kansas City. Uh, you know, when you got your good coach, you go over the recruiting board and it's, you know, some guys going, yeah, uh, he's from, and they're looking up there, you know, and you're going, take him down. We got no chance. We ain't been recruiting him. You know what I mean? Eric's on it. Ronnie Fouch. Ronnie's really good get. Uh, Bobby had recommended him uh, and a really good get here. And of course, uh, uh, Bobby's one of those guys that. I don't know if he can get any quarterback he wants, but he can get most any quarterback that he wants and uh, just from his reputation. And uh, so all of them have been really, really, really good hires, and I've enjoyed each one of them, knowing them as a person and getting to know them that way and their family. Thanks, Coach. I don't know about that one. I'm worried about Taylor Green and Chris right now.